מסכס, בוא ומציע דף ל"ט עמוד בייז, בעזרת השם, מרי בר איסק, מידל אוף כיסלב תשפ"ג, we are. מרי בר איסק, דסיוס לאילו נשמס אורי מוירי מנחם בן עקיבא, לאילו נשמס רוס בר שולם סור בס מוישה, בסויך ולרפואה, סמוישה אריה בן חומו, אביבה בס דבוירו, ני נחה בס גולוכה בסוף שלך לסול. מרי בר איסק, מרי בר איסק, So we are going to tell a story now, an interesting story of the long-lost brother. Mari Bar Isak, Mari Bar Isak was a powerful, rich man. And the story of his life is, yeah, as follows. Mari Bar Isak, A brother of him came from a city of Bechozoi. What does that mean? Yeah. A brother of Mari Bar Isak came from Bechozoi. Meaning, says Rashi, that there was a break in the family. Mari Bar Isak and his family moved to Bechozoi, where Mari Bar Isak's father married another wife. And then they had, he had a younger brother. Yeah, he had a younger brother that was born from the second wife in the other town. Now this long-lost brother comes back to Mari Bar Isak. And what does he tell him? Omer Lei, ploigli. Give me half of everything that you inherited. The father died. And once the father died, we say, what, what do you mean, who we say? <laughs> the brother says, give me half. Give me half of the Yerusha. I'm your brother. Aren't you happy to see me? Well, Mari Barisak says, no, I'm not happy to see you. And give you half my money. Omar Lay says Mari Barisak to his brother, Lo yadan alach. I don't know who you are. <laughs> Yeah, and don't touch my field. You touch my field, that's not your face. So basically, says Mar I don't know you. Okay? So now the brother, and we are behind the scenes, we know that the brother is saying the truth. How do we know? I'm going to explain to you soon. There's some subtext over here we have to understand. Also, the commander of Chizda. So the brother is now devastated, going to the Dayan of Chizda, and soon we'll see that also Mar Barisak was there. The brother of Mari Barista comes to Rav Chizda that his brother is ignoring him and not willing to give him the will. Omer Lei says Rav Chizda to the brother, Shapir ka Omer Lach, he's right. What he's telling you is not necessarily a lie. What he's telling you, Mari Barista, I don't know you and I won't give you the cash or the money or anything or the land, makes sense what he says. Yeah, he's not Mishaker. He's not necessarily lying or dodging out. Shenema, as it says in the Bible, yeah, you're familiar with Genesis, yeah, the story of Joseph and his brothers, very nice. Shenema, ve'yoker Yosef es echo, ve'em lo ikiru. It says Yosef recognized his brothers, and they did not recognize him. Melamed, that is to say, famous, famous line, shiyotza b'loi chasim ha'zokon, u'ban b'chasim ha'zokon. Why did they not recognize Yosef? When he left uh, Eretz Yisrael, went down to Egypt, you know, in this uh, nicely perfumed carriage on uh, the camel, What was then? He did not have any resemblance of beard. He didn't have the beginning of a beard, Bechlal. And when they saw him now, he had the beard. What's going on here? So therefore, we say, when Maibar Isaac says that he doesn't know you, could be that what he says makes sense. Why? Because when you left, as we're going to see later on, when Maibar Isaac left the family in, in Bechozoi and went to wherever he lives now, Yeah, so then that younger brother, that younger half-brother through the father, was really young. He was actually below Bar Mitzvah, we're going to see later in the sugya. And therefore, what my brother's success makes sense when he claims he doesn't know you, you're really in trouble. All the Rishonim ask unanimously, almost, and most of them gave more or less the same answer. Why, why do you need Yosef HaTzadik to intervene over here? I learned in Kita Hey Vov, I think, Now, who is, why, why do we have to justify Marber Isaac that he says, I don't know you from Adam, yeah? They're saying, you know, because Yosef, what do you mean? If you come to me and you tell me, yeah, who wants to be my brother? I don't recommend, yeah? Uh, yeah, okay. Yaakov comes and says, you know, Akiva, I'm your brother. Give me half your money. That's not very promising, by the way. So then, yeah, of course I don't have to start saying Yosef at Tzadik. Mechitesi. You want half my money back. Then every person would hit any rich guy in the street, Rishonim Esk, you know. I want to be the brother of uh, Wolfson Reichman. I don't know, Rockefeller. I'm the brother of Bill Gates. You know, really is Jewish. 
you know, I'm the brother of Elon Musk. I'm a brother, you know, give me half your money. What kind of shtiot is that? Elamai, right? I already hinted to you before about the story. This is not classical Moetzi Mechavero. This is not a nobody who came. Mali, but two factors here. In fact, I'm combining a few Rishonim together. I'm making a nice salad from the Rishonim. Tarsas, Ritva, many others. We know, who's we know? Yeah? Even, Ma, even Mari Barisak himself knew that he had a brother. There is a brother, and nobody argues on that. The question is, is this the brother? It's not the same thing. In other words, Mari Barisak knew and admitted, because Taisa says, Mari Barisak doesn't say, you are not my brother, get out. He says, I don't know if you are the brother. And also, look, look, listen to Loshan Begmore, the nice Duke, Baruch Hashem. The brother came from Bechazoi. So the narrator of the Gemara is telling me the brother came, right? If the, the if this would be a man in the street who claims he's the brother, the Gemara should have said, also Inish, also Barnosho came someone and claimed he's the brother. That's not true. We say somebody came, we know he's the brother, and Maribor Isaac knows that he has a brother. He just says, I don't know if you are the brother or not. So there are two disadvantages. We know that there is a brother. And Mar Barisak is also not very assertive by saying, I know you are not. He says, I don't know if you are. It's not the same thing. So because we know there's a chazoka, there's a brother, plus Mar Barisak himself is a bit shaky in the story, one could say, that's not a Moitzim Chaveroi. Maybe Mar Barisak knows there's a brother, but he doesn't want to give the money. So he's playing games saying, like, I don't know if you are the real guy. Says on that, says Rav Chizda, Joseph the Righteous. Says Rav Chizda, no. Since Be'emes, since Be'emes, at the end of the day, the money is in the hands of Mar And Mar has a has a good taina. He says, I left town, yeah, to start my new life out there. When you were, when, if you are my brother, you are 10. You're now, I don't know, 25. I don't recognize you. It's an MSD Ketayna. So though I'm shaking, all things shaky, but Lamais, at the end of the day, your proof at the end of the day is not good enough. Yeah, because you left without a beard, and now you have a beard, so now it is true when I'm claiming I don't know you, and we're back to regular. Prove to me. I know I have a brother. Prove to me you're the one. I, the facial features, I don't know. Show me to Dadzu. Didn't have to Dadzu back then. I prefer no questions unless urgent and very local. It's a story that has to be read through, and then. Alachik, Avada. No, I don't know if you're the brother, halachic and 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 genetic and and, and um, family wise. I don't know if you're my brother. Yes or no? And therefore, the nafkamina is lamani. Why should I give you half the money? Prove that you're my brother. I really don't know. You, you are. You look like a cute little baby. Now you look like a, I don't know Rosh Hashiva or a head of a mafia. I don't know what you came. And uh... Omerle. So therefore, Rav Chizda keeps talking to the brother. Now it's very important to follow the conversation. Rav Chizda now keeps talking to the another statement to the brother, and says, Zil, go, I see Sadi, Dachua, At, go and bring Adim, that you are the brother, very good, go bring Adim, somehow that they know that you are the son of uh, Isaac, the, the father of the family, and then all will be good, because at the end of the day, we did build up your Motsim Chavar Lavaraya, bring Adim, Adim are amazing, that's a Motsim Chavar Omar Lay says the brother to the diner of Sista, Isli Sadi, I have Adim, I do have Adim, the question is if they're on their way or they already came to Beisdin, but there are real Adim there. The Dachli Minei, they're scared of my Marisa. They're scared to open their mouth and say that I'm their brother because they will be against my Marisa. The Gavra Alima, who is a violent person, doesn't sound like he was super violent, like he's going to punch your nose right away. He's a very powerful guy. He's the kind of guy you don't mess up with. Yeah, yeah, he's rich and powerful. Yeah, you know such people. You don't mess up with that guy, my Marisa. And therefore, I have Adim who their mouth is like, you know, gagged, basically, because they're not going to open their mouth against him. Now the dine is turning to the real star of the show. Now the dine, Rav Chizda, is now going to talk to Mari Bar Isak. Omar Lei, Ledide, now he spoke to Mari Bar Isak, saying, Zil Ant, Aitisadi, now you go, Mr. Mari Bar Isak, Aitisadi, bring Adim, the love Achuhu, that is not your brother. You have to bring Adim, Mari Bar Isak, that is not your brother. Yeah. Omar Lei, Frecht Mari Bar Isak, Agroiset Amid Chochem, Mari Bar is saying back to the dying, Dina Achi, Tzve Alohai, that's the Din, Amoitzim Chavar Lavaraya. 
says my Isak from you know his knowledge from Kita Dalid, and he said In other words, I have to prove the money is mine. Yeah, the money was mine all the time. This guy comes from nowhere claiming he's my brother. I have to bring a proof that he's not my brother. What kind of thing is that? The onus is on him, the one who tries to take out the money. Don't you know that, Dayan? Yeah. Omar Lay says the Dayan to my brother Isaac, and that's Aloha in Shulchan Oruch. Omar Lay, Hachi Dainina Lach, will call Alimi de Chavrach. Listen, mister, this is the way I'm going to judge you and all other violent people, which means. Since we know that our Adim, let's say the Adim were in based in, let's say we know that our Adim, and those Adim are like, <laughs> are not talking because the other side, Be'etzem, has Adim, and it's because of your violence that they're scared to open their mouth. What do we do? We switch and we swap, like we do sometimes by Shvua, as we've seen many times before. The same thing we do by Raya. If we know that the person who is the the one that's supposed to not be niche, but the one claim, the one that we want to get money out of. He has the money, want to say, no, the money is mine, says, says somebody to a violent guy, and he has a good reason to think that the money is his because we know there is brotherhood in. And the fact is that the Edim don't open their mouth, then we switch it over, yeah, we basically turn the tables, we turn the cards, and we say, no, the one who has to bring Edim to prove himself right is the one holding the money, against the regular dogma of what's the Chalvaraya. Why? Because those Adim really have their mouth almost open. They're scared to open their mouth because of you. It's your fault. It's Kilo the R Adim against you. You want to bring counter Adim. You bring Adim. Now, there are two ways to explain it. Either, yeah, either that you... I'll say it soon. One minute. Omar Lay. Okay, no, no, I'll say it now. Some people say that those two Adim who knew the brother, right? There are two Adim who know the story, but they're scared to open their mouth, according to the to the brother, right? Some people say, including Rashi, that really what Maibar Isak is, is, is asked to do, let them be made, let them testify, yeah, that they that he is not your brother. They know him, they know the guy, they know the new guy who came to town. If you are right, my Barisak, yeah, let them testify on your side and let them open their mouth and say that really he's not your brother, because that's what you claim. Let them talk. Omar, Omar Lay, so now answers Mari Barisak to the Dayan. So if so if at the end of the day he says a good taina, Osi Sahadi, the Adim would come, below Masadi, they will not give Edus like him, but like me, says Rashi. Rashi adds words here. They won't give the right edus. They'll give the wrong edus because they're scared of me. Which means, Mar Basic claims as follows. It's actually a good taina. Mar is not a stupid guy. He says to the diner of Chizda, wait a second. If you claim I'm such a violent guy, right? And I'm such a terrible guy. People are so scared of me. If that's what you're saying, if so, why are you asking me to bring edim? Aren't you concerned that the edim that I will bring will lie because they're scared of me? <laughs> so therefore, I cannot bring edim. Money actually is not the issue. He doesn't give money. He's he's uh, he's uh, gonna, you know. He knows where they live. He knows where the car is parked. He knows where the explosives are. You know, he's friendly with Mario and Luigi, the Hule and Massimo. He's friendly with all of them. So the Maisa, what? He's not a ton. Marbury is not a ton. He's a regular guy. Marbury is no. He's not, never as no. not Rav Rabbi. He's a person. But so the Sadi Veloma Sadi. So now he's asking good. He's saying, good, my brother, Isaac. If you say I'm so violent, so I cannot bring Adim either, right? So if we're stuck with Akasha, I'll stay with the money because I also can't bring Adim because of my own violence, my own detriment. And says the Gemara, now the Dayan is talking, Omer Lei, Rav Chizda tells Mari Bar Isaac, Tati loy Avdi. They want to do two bad things, which means the, this guy is not going to kill them, Pikuach Nefesh. Adim, the way they'll react to you, Mr. Marber Isaac, yeah. Adim, yeah. They, what will they do? They won't go two steps in the wrong direction. Meaning, explains Rashi, to not give the right edus and keep quiet, they may. We are concerned that these Adim are here, not talking, knowing the truth, that he is your brother. We're concerned about it, and they're not talking, they're not shouting the truth and saying, yes, he's the brother, and they're like, they're scared. But to Mamish lie and say that he is not the brother, 
Yeah, that much we're not scared that they would do. In other words, to outright lie, Edu Sheker, Beshvua, Sefer Toiro, open our toilet, Shnevo Shkhoirim, the Shvua Sheker, and Edu Sheker based in, they're not that scary, and they're not so Choshu, they're Kosher Edim, and that much we're not concerned. So, but yeah, they won't outright lie. They won't go two stages above, yeah, from a minus, they'll go to zero. They won't go to plus lying. They're not going to go above the line and mamish lie. And therefore, Mr. Marbar Yisak, which is not a Tana, you do have what? You have the option of, this my Bar Choma, by the way. I think it's, it's, it's Mar Bar Choma, Bar Yisak, Mar Bar Choma is a Tana. And therefore, you, Mari Bar Yisak, you are now in a disadvantage. Because of you, Adim cannot open their mouth. It's actually, if you write, and our Adim, we're not, we're not concerned you'll pay the money. No, we're not concerned they'll threaten to pay money. Bring your own Adim. As long as you don't bring your own Adim, you will have to give him the land. Why? Because it's Ke'ilu, your brother has Adim, right? But they can't open their mouth. The onus is on you, and you're not bringing Adim. You're not bringing Adim? Pay up. It's your fault. So if you don't pay the Adim, excuse me, if you don't bring Adim, pay instead. Let's say, at the end of the day, I'll be with you soon. That's the end of the beginning of the story, end of episode one. At the end, Adim came that he's a brother. Although Mechabrusa corrected said, correctly said, even if Adim wouldn't have come, it sounds from the sugya that Mar would have to give him. But there was a very happy, not end, sort of <laughs> a very not so uh, a very unhappy family reunion that the Adim came and testified that he is the brother. So now he has to give him half, either half or half of the money. And excuse me, there's. I was taught by British people to respect the Kie. Now, very nice. Now the brother is supposed to get half the field. So let's say there's a fit. No, is it? now let's. Well, let's uh second part of the story, second chapter of the story, which has to do more with our sugya of the guy, guy who ran away, remember? And a relative comes, a relative invests. I'm just reminding you before we re-open yeah, the subject and go to the second chapter of the story. Basically, what did we say up until now? Somebody, Misken, ran away or was captured and really has no way of you know, appointing anybody to look after, look after his field. The field is really beginning to be neglected and destroyed and everything. Based in encourage, sometimes encourage, sometimes the people themselves come. A relative comes to the field. So in most circumstances, how much does he get for investing in the field and really making the field nicer and better? He gets like an oh, he sometimes gets the entire thing. If we if we think that the guy died, he gets he gets the crops of every year. And also when uh we don't he doesn't know whether it's dead or not, the master he knows the one who's looking after the field of the captured person knows that he's looking after someone else's field, right? Not his own, and he gets a third, a quarter, a half. However much is the percentage of the sharecropper gets, and then when the guy comes from Khul, good, the Sada goes back to him, one who comes back from captivity. That's, in short, the previous sugya in very, very short terms. Now, says, back to the courtroom, Baba. camera goes back now to the courtroom with Mari Bar Isak, devastated and angry, and his brother is celebrating with champagne. I was proven to be the brother. Hey, brother! And now, therefore, Let's say they have the field of what? I don't know, 10 kilometers, that's not so big, yeah, 10 kilometers square. And what? Marbarisak, up until now, was the owner of the Gansazach. And now, says the brother, endorsed by Vezin, give me half, give me half the thing. Now, Marbarisak was a rich man, powerful. Do you think that in those 20 years, he just let the land lay fallow? No. He built a five star hotel there, swimming pool, and a space station. And I don't know what else he built there. Or in the terms of the Gemara, he built there, or I should say planted there, a very nice orchard with a million shekel worth of trees. Oh, the entire 10 acres or 10, no, acres is much more. The, whatever, the entire field is now full of trees and investments invested by who? By Marber Isaac, who really invested right from the start in a field that half belonged to his brother, to his little brother. Okay, so that get that gets not very complicated, but a very interesting ping pong here of three different options. What's going to happen now? Now, the brother, all devastated from the ordeal he had to go till now, the brother now, let's go back to the Gemara. Omar Lay, yeah, 
Lifloig li nami mi pardesi ubustani de shotal. Says the brother, I now want him to give me half of all the pardesim. Actually, pardes says Rashi is a vineyard. And bustani is also, he says, houses of trees. But kids are all the trees and all the orchards and all the vineyards that he shosal, that he planted, I want half of them. Now everyone's going to ask a question, and I'm going to answer before you're going to ask. Everyone wants to ask now, or some of you want to ask now, but telepathy is so good, Kanehara. Some people want to ask, what you mean he's going to get the entire half, but my Barisak is the one who spends money. The answer is very, very simple. Of course, the brother, yeah, let's say my Barisak invested a uh, hundred thousand shekels, right? In in those five kilometers and the half belonging to the brother. How much did I say? Ten thousand, hundred thousand, hundred thousand, hundred thousand, very nice. But now it's worth a million. Says the brother, listen, give me a million minus hundred thousand. That's nine hundred. 900,000. In other words, okay, deduct, okay, take away, subtract the investment, bet I'll, I'll, I'll pay you, but give me all the trees because they grew in my area. You invested in my area, therefore I deserve everything that's there. I prefer no questions for the simple reason that every svara under the sun will be mentioned in the Gemara. So let me talk now the entire thing all the way through, and then if you have questions, you can reserve them. Amarle, the kids of the brother claims, I want the half, my half, as it is now. I want it as it is now, with the trees, with everything, with a nice uh, whatever ornament, with a nice fence, because you really invested in my field, and I it's my field that everything grew in. Your investment? Ah, that claim investment? Okay, deduct 100,000, no problem. Omerle says the Dayan, who's the Dayan endorsing? The brother. Omerle, Shapir Kaomerlach. Says the Dayan to Mari Barisak, who's not very sad, he says to Mari Barisak, Shapir Kamalach, as we say in Yeshivish English, which is wrong, he's saying good, he's correct, he's saying the right thing, the brother is right, the brother is right for saying what? For saying that really, yeah, the really, the, um, uh, blah, 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 blah. the brother is right that half the field with all the investment belongs to him. Why? That not, it says in the Mishnah, I have to now switch. That uh, now it says in the Mishnah, bonim Let's say a person left behind lo leinu yesoimim. yesoimim. Some of them are above bar mitzvah. Some are below be, below bar mitzvah. The shbichu gdolim misanechosim. What happens when you have a field similar to our case? You have a field. You have two brothers who are twenty and twenty-five. Another set of brothers who are five and ten. Some way above bar mitzvah. Some below. The twenty and twenty-five. They work, they hishbichu. What's hishbichu? They improved, they invested. The Nechosim was a barren, fallow field, and now it is Shia, five star hotel plus swimming pool plus an airport. They built there. So who gets it? Because the at the end of the day, both Golem and Tanim, the land is all mixedly owned by everybody. Hishbichu la emtsa, meaning half, half, which means the investment of the Golem, once the Ktanim grow up and learn how to to talk, the Ketanim will tell the Gdolim, or the Apotropos of the Ketanim will tell the Gdolim, everything you invested is now, yeah, let's say half the field belongs to the Ketanim, that half the field with a fancy hotel, with the orchard, with a swimming pool, with the airport, half of it belongs to to the Ketanim. If you invested in your brother's field, knowing full well that it belongs to your brother, you knew that the Ketanim are there, and you invested, yeah, and therefore it belongs to the Ketanim, yeah, the Rabbah says, it's not, Rashi says, not the Rabbah endorses the Mishnah. There are different ways to explain that Mishnah. I'm not going there because it's not for now. But basically, the Rabbah, and Rashi says, it's Rav, says, yeah, that's how we go in the Mishnah. Even though the Yesomim themselves, the big ones, invested from their own money, from their own money, once we split the land, the Ketanim put a fence, this is the Ketanim, this is the Gdolim, the Ketanim do get the land with all the investment of the, the Gdolim invested in it. And the Gdolim can say, hey, we invested and we didn't want you to have it. So the same thing over here. My Barisak, you invested in your brother's field and therefore your brother will get the invested field with all the millions it's worth now. Omer Abaye, you may say it's not right, not fair. Look at Abaye. Abaye completely disagrees with our we three, three opinions. Abai completely disagrees with Rabuna and makes a clear distinction 
between the two cases. Midami, what's the connection? What, what, what does one have to do with the other? What, what, what's the similarity? Also, over there in the Mishnah Ksubos, about the two sets of Yisomim, Gdolim and Ktanim, Gdolim Gabe Ktanim Yadi, the Gdolim know about the existence of the Ktanim. They all live together. The Gdolim make them sandwiches in the morning and they read their notes from the Rebbe in Cheder. The Gdolim, they know very well that the Ktanim are there, knowing very well that the field that they're investing in, the entire field, they know that half the field belongs to the Ktanim, the Kamachli, and their Moichel. If we see the Gdolim that they invest in the entire field, including the Ktanim's part, and the hotel goes everywhere, and the swimming pool is everywhere, and, and the field is everywhere, of course, it's like they gave Matono, Mechila, to the Ktanim. If I come to your house with a nice uh, gift, yeah, Yitzchok, wrapped with a red ribbon, of course, it's a Matono for you. I don't have to say anything. Aha, as opposed to over here with the store, Marber Isak, it's not the same. Miyoda de Lechil. Ah, he didn't know about the brother. He didn't know. Now, he knew that he had a brother, but he never imagined in his life that the brother will appear. Ah, yeah, sounds like a novel, you know? The brother from many years ago reappeared in his life 20 years later. Oh, no. In other words, he did not know that the brother would reappear. So, therefore, when he invested in the field, Aliba de Emes, is Mali Belis like a very honest guy? No. Mali Belis knew that there is a brother somewhere out there, that little baby that left back home, when he went out to make a life for himself, yeah, he knew that there is a brother, but he wasn't in the forefront of his mind. In other words, he wasn't actively Moichel when he really planted all those trees. He didn't have in mind, I'm doing this for my little brother. He actually thought little brother would never come. It's true that now little brother came and proved to be the brother and he gets half. But my brother Isaac did not have him in mind when he planted the trees. And therefore, don't bring me a proof from Tsubis. Maybe over here in the Khanami, my brother Isaac will say, no, you take half the field. And I'll take away the trees or no, or you'll have to give me cash against all the improvement. I don't know how they'll do it. That's a technical question. It doesn't really make a difference. Says Mali Barisak, endorsed by Abai. Abai supports Mali Barisak. No, I had no idea you're going to come. So I did not do it for you, as opposed to Mishnah Tsubas. And therefore, I'll give you half the field, but the invested part, you'll somehow have to reimburse me. It was my investment, which I had in mind only for myself. Now you're causing me to lose all the investment which I didn't have you in mind. Now, of course, it's not so simple. As I said, if I was now Rav Chista's side, I would say, excuse me, my brother, you know that there was a brother, right? And you still invested without asking, without, do, you know, you, you, were, you ran too quickly to take hold of the entire field and invest. It's true you didn't have your brother in mind, but that's good for the problem. Why didn't you? You know that really there's somebody who may come one day and you're really dealing with other people's money. That's just a thing to hold in the side. Third opinion now. Listen to what happened. That's another third chapter of the story. Igalgel Milsa, that, that word, which means the Psak Din of Rav Chizda. Again, what did Rav Chizda say? Rav Chizda says the brother should get half with the investment. Yeah, with the investment. Now that story came into, rolled over, the rumor came, and Umata Lekameh Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Ami's based in, which by the way was in a different country, Eretz Yisrael. So the rumor went from Eretz Yisrael, from Babel to Eretz Yisrael, and Rabbi Ami, which is the third opinion, commented, says Toysfes, on the Psak of Abhizda. Now we're coming to a healthy middle, that's Rabbi Ami, based on our previous sugya. Omar Lehu, Rabbi Ami told them, guys, don't you remember the sugya which we just learned? G'doy l'miza omru. Chachomim said something even greater. What is that? Shomin lem ke oris. Ay, 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 ay. I forgot about oris. Mr. Oris. Which means? We saw that if someone is investing in someone else's field, knowing that it belongs to someone else, right? So could be your right of Chizda. Of course it belongs to somebody else. But Lamai say, Marber Isak, you may like him or not. I don't like Marber Isak so much. You know, don't marry his daughter. But Lamai say, Marber Isak did invest. Yes. Yeah, so a person who invested in someone else's field still gets a trophy, gets a prize, gets a sweetie called what? Oh, it's percentage, half, third quarter. So hashtag continues Rabbi Ami on a, on a roll and steroids. The day, Loya Dina Lay. Now that he thought all these years the field is his, maybe he's not a nice guy. It's true. Maybe Anuchinami, yeah, it wasn't so Yashar. But at the end of the day, 
It was his field. He had shaykhs in the field, and he thought the whole field will be his. So Lamaisa, even though I agree with you of Chizda, I'm not as extreme as Abaye. The etzim, you should go half-half. Now the brother should get half with the investment of the half of the brother, but the brother should pay Maribar Isak now, like in Oris, on all these years. He should really deduct a third or a quarter of an half because Maribar Isak should not be worse than a person who came and helped another guy in the other guy's field, but still says, excuse me, I worked like a donkey here for all this year. I deserve at least some kind of salary, like what? Like in an Oris. So that should be the middle way, says Rabbi Ami. I love everybody. On one end, I agree to Rabbi Chizda, the what? Really, he deserves the entire half because Mar Baristik invested in the brother's field. But hey, brother, please be, give the, or, the half or third or quarter to the brother who invested so much. Yeah, as we see in our sugya. Answers the Gemara, Adua Hole Kamedo of Chizda. They brought back from Eretz Israel via emails. Oh. They brought back the message back to Rav Chizda, saying, Rav Chizda, listen to the very intelligent comment of Rabbi Ami. Omar Leuna, oh, says Rav Chizda, I disagree with Rabbi Ami. Me, Dami, how can you compare Ramari Bar Isak to the guy who is an Oris, who was brought there by Beisdin? Awesome, you know when it is we give prizes and trophies? In Avotu Banim. Bereshus Nochis. Ocho, love Bereshus Nochis. Almost the punchline, which means... The guy who gets a trophy, a third or a quarter, is somebody who based in allowed to go down and they recommend it. The guy who comes and really, really helps the person who's in captivity, he's really doing a chesed to the guy. He's not doing chesed for free. We said before chesed for free is not worth much. So he does chesed for percentage. He's like a nice collector of tzedakah. You know, he's really a good guy. I'm away from my family, he says, for, for a month and a half. Give me a percentage. And the rabbinim say, it's okay, whatever. Then what? Pirshus, he was done with permission. Therefore, that guy of our sugi of the Oris gets the right. Here, my Barisak, no. He came down there without asking anybody. As I told you before, that's a small of Rav Chizda. My Barisak, you are a piece of work. You came to the land and you rushed into your brother's land, knowing that there is a brother out there, baby, gagaga. You didn't ask any Shaila. You rushed without asking any Shaila. You don't get trophies. You don't get prizes from us, mister. No way. Now comes the huge punchline, huge punchline, the oid, and that's a punchline. Cotton who, when the story started, when you got into the field and your daddy is, is, daddy is dead, and you're so sorry, but so happy that you have the field, right? You started investing in whose field? In the field of your little brother. So even if you want to say, no, I have the, the brother I meant well, no. Even a really well-meaning guy, we learned yesterday, remember the three statements of Ravuna, even a really, really well-meaning volunteer, right? One brother, big brother, cannot be the one taking care of his little brother because maybe he's going to claim that it's his. And it's exactly what you're doing now. You, my brother, Isaac, you are the case which we're scared of. I'm doing Chazar for yesterday. What did we say yesterday at the beginning of Shir? That if there's a cotton, a baby that's far away, out of control, he was captured, Lolein, who ran away from home, I don't know, and he's below Bar Mitzvah, we take care of his field of the cotton, but the last person in the world to take care of the field is his brother, because his brother is going to become a balabos and claim that it's his. That's what you're doing, Rav Amari Bar So for sure, you're the one, get out of there now. You don't claim to me now, right? And it's surprising, as we're going to see now, how come Rabbi Ami didn't realize that? Yeah, Rabbi Ami says, yes, he gets surprised. Says the Gemara, listen to this, beautiful. They brought back the case to Rabbi Ami, and they told him what Rav Chizda said. Omer Lehu, they told them, Lo the cotton who, when they asked me the shalat, they didn't tell me there was a cotton. He asked her, Rabbi, my friends, you have to give all the details, including the embarrassing details. <laughs> In other words, says Rabbi Ami, okay, I had no idea that that story is about a cotton. Because really, my brother Isaac, they went to his little brothers, the Chosim. First of all, Rav Chizda holds the guys, even if you say you should look at him as a volunteer who's taking care of other people's money, to take care of your little brother's assets is traif. It's not supposed to be the case. Of course, my brother Isaac does not deserve one dime. I mean, deserves only the minimal uh, expense, but he doesn't deserve to get, like an always, a third or a quarter or no way, because he's not doing the right thing at all here. And therefore, the entire half goes to the brother, 
to the long lost and now found brother. And therefore, the entire half goes to the brother without giving not half, and not a third, and not a quarter. And Marber Isaac, and Marber Isaac, who was too eager, too quick, and too, you know, too much alacrity, Zrizus over there, to quickly take care of the entire field, including the brother that he didn't know of his existence and was a little brother. Uh oh, no, my friend Marber Isaac, you're getting not zero, but Kimat. Yeah, you're not going to get him out anything, and the brother will get his half, his, let's say, five kilometers square with a fancy hotel there, with a swimming pool, with everything. How much would he get? Oh, just the expense, but not more than that. And now we're starting the Mishnah. Question time. That's a nice time to break for a short question break. Says, says the this has to do with previous sugya, but it's a new Mishnah. A person deposited friends, uh, excuse me, fruit by his friend, not friends, but the fruit. He actually deposited fruit by his friend. Now, the friend also has fruit of the same type. Usually, as we're going to see now, fruit is not fruit as uh, apples or oranges. It's actually things that are like grains, legumes, and things like that. What does it mean, Yotzelochesloinos? There is always a normal decrease in the amount of fruit every year. And that exactly is what we're going to see now, how much decreases every year from each and every type of grain. Yeah. In other words, because there are mice and also there are other chesroinists, and it's expected that mice eat some, some percentage of the fruit, and that's the way it is. And the mafkid knows it and the nifka knows it. So when the nifka, the shomer, gives him back a few months later, or let's say over a year later, he gives him back the fruit, then there's always an expected decrease in the amount so if you gave him X, you give him X minus certain percentage for each and every fruit, and the bilim cannot complain. That's the basic premise. You can ask many questions here, and the Gemara will ask two very, very vital questions about it. But for now, I'll give you already a hint. So the whole thing, we're talking that he, I think foolishly, he mixed all the fruit together, which means if the person who was mafkid nifgad, if his grains were left in a separate room, separate... Um, very, very um, non-permeable bag, and it was just there separately, whatever you gave me, take back. We don't even have an issue. But let's say your gra grains of wheat, I happily accepted your grains of wheat and then mixed them with mine, oy, 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 right? Then I don't know how much is yours, how much is mine, but I did measure it when you originally gave me, let's say one ko, ko is a big amount, let's say you gave me one ko of chitim, then I know that if you gave me one call, then when I give you back, it will be call minus, let's say, 2.5%. Why? Because norm it's normal that the mice or other factors we see later make the wheat go less, less than in amount. And therefore, when I give it back, it will be less than what you were mapped. Let's see. Lechitim v'leoirez. They're now going to have three levels of a percentage. Lechitim v'leoirez. For wheat and oirez, you think oirez is rice? You may be right. Rashi says, Oirez is millet. Millet. Tisha chatzoi kabin the kul. It's nine times half, which is four and a half kabin per kul. Now, one kul is ten eifa, one eifa is three seah. So one seah, yeah, is 180 kul. Yeah, in other words, one kul, if you can see here, is 180 kabin, right? Six times three times ten is 180. Yeah, and now, and 180, if you take 4.5 divided by 180, that comes two and a half percent. Calculator, internet, yeah. So now two and a half percent is with the expected decrease in amount of what? Of chitim and oirin. Okay, very nice. Now, let's say the original thing that he brought him to look after was what's the oirin? Barley. Doichan is either millet or a specific type of millet for Rashi. Tisha kabin lukur. That's nine kabin per core. It's not two and a half, that's five percent. So five percent is always expected to decrease. I give you back and I remeasure it now, minus five percent, that's what I'll give you. La kusmin ulzer pishtan. Kusmin is a no, kusemit is a spelt. Spelt, spelt, spelt. That's how you spell it. I know, but kusmin and the Gmar is spelt. And Rashi also says it's falta in French or something. Yeah. La kusmin spelt with zera pishtan, which is the flax seeds. Sholosh sein le ku. How much is Sholosh Seah per kul? 30, that is what? 10%, right? Sholosh Seah per each kul. Kul is 30 afos. 10 times 3 is 30, you know that? 
and therefore it's 10%, it's a lot, so it's 2.5%, 5%, and 10% per call. A call lefi hamida, which means, and this is important to know, it's in ratio. If it's one kur, you have to give how much? 2.5%. If it's two kurim, you have to 2.5 plus 2.5%. 5%. In other words, the percentage is per call. Yeah, if it's 10 korim or 20 korim or 30 korim, that's huge. Per each call separately, you have to always deduct the percentage of the mice eat and other things. The call of man. And also, if you're going to ask me what's the Kiddush, you see the Kiddush now. The call of man. What's a call of man? That is to say, every year it's the same damage. In other words, let's say it's there five years. We don't say that it increases or decreases exponentially, but we say it's the same. Every year, the mice like to eat the same amount of, let's say, two and a half percent in uh, from uh, from chitim from wheat. Okay, that's what the Tanakhama says. Omar Rabbi Yochanan Benuri, Rabbi Yochanan Benuri comes with a very valid question against Tanakhama, and he says, <laughs> Why do the mice care? <laughs> Why do the mice care? <laughs> if those mice are creatures of regular natural diet, yeah. They eat the same amount per year, whether you have more or you have less. Took me time to get it until the Chapter Yochan Manur is absolutely fabulously right. Which means, let's say mice, yeah, the zoologist told us, yeah, the mumcha, the mycologist, yeah, told us he knows Minnie and Mickey, Mamash, good friends, and now he knows they eat X amount per year. That's it. They don't care if the granary that they're eating from contains one kuh or ten kuhim. What do they care? It's not like human beings, you see a bigger table. Yeah, I've never been to an American wedding. Oh, I've heard smorgasbord are, you don't just get a small sandwich, right? A little bit, yeah. A bigger smorgasbord, we eat more. But mice are not like that. They eat as much as they need and they go back home. They're not well, they're not in a diet, but they're also not to the it's so hard to eat too much. And therefore, yeah, so he mainly says, Rabbi Yochan Benuri, therefore, what would he say? He says, no. Ella continues, Eino yotze l'chesronot, ela l'kur echad bilvad. The same chesroinois, the same percentage you take off from one kul and ten kulim are the same. Because Lamaisa, they eat from one kul, let's say four and a half kabim, that's what they eat per year. It's the same amount of, of achbar, the same amount of everything. Either it's nine kulim more, they don't care. Ma'achpat, they eat their sandwiches and that's it. A very cal- calculated person in a diet, a good guy who's really in a diet, I, I'm, I am jealous. So this guy, whether he has at home billions of foods, or one portion. He eats a portion that the dietitian told him. That's how the mice are. That's what Rebbe Nuri says. Toisva says, Toisva quotes a Yerushalmi. Look at the Toisva. Says the Toisva, the third Toisva. How can Rabbonon face Rebbe Yechon Benuri? It's a difficult uh, thing to understand. He says the Yerushalmi. You know the Toisva often quotes Yerushalmi. Hani Achbori Rishininu. Achborim are wicked animals. They're nice to each other, but they're wicked to us. Kadchami and Ibu, when they see grains, when they see a nice food, not only they eat themselves, they call their friends to eat along with them. In other words, when Achborim see a lot of food, they bring with them other people in the mice group, other people, yeah, from the Mishpoche, and they bring all of them, the more food, the more Achborim. That's what Chachomim believe. Therefore, it is exponential, yeah? Therefore, yeah, per core is that, two core is more because more achborim are coming because they see there's a big party going on over there. Yeah, I'm in a diet, but let my friend who's also in a diet come along. That's what the achborim say according to Tanakama. Rabbi Yudah, email. Rabbi Yudah says, Imoy samida meruba, oh, Rabbi Yudah is more sticky. Imoy samida meruba, if we're talking about big amounts, at some point the amount is so great, says actually 10 core. 10 core is a lot even today. Again, if you can start the cheshbon for kabim, you guys are good in math more than me. You know how much is a kav? It's between 140 kilos and 240. Yeah, we know from So about between one and a half and 240 kilos times times 180 is a ko. That's more than 180 kilos, or could be even double, right? So 10 kos is 1,800 kilos, or even double. It's a big amount. So 10 ko, yeah, is so much. And at that point, says Rabbi, says, says Rabbi Yehuda, at that point, you don't have to deduct the chesroi noise, and the shomer has to give him the entire amount. Why? Because, listen to this, the grain grows bigger. Hmm? Swells. That's a nice word. Very nice. 
explains Rashi, and we're probably going to explain it tomorrow. Explains Rashi as follows. Grains tend, depends on the time of year. The, the story is as follows. When the person deposits the grains with his friend, usually it happens in the summer. You harvest, we all know when you harvest. Right? That in the summer you harvest and you don't have room in your North Tel Aviv apartment. You go to your friend in the kibbutz or the moshav, he has a nice storage room. You say, Shimon, can you please look after my grains? They are in the summer, they actually shrink. Interesting. Usually we say cold makes them shrink. Here we say no. In the winter, when he wants the grains because he wants to eat for some reason and it's cold in the winter, it's more likely to take them back in the winter, maybe a year and a half later, but the mice in the winter. And then because of the rain and the cold, very interestingly, Rashi says they actually swell a bit. Not very much, not very much, but they tend to actually swell a little bit. So what? Now, the swelling is not really significant. However, says Obida like this. Obida says, mm, I partially give Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri. I think that Achbarim, when it comes to 10 kol, 10 kol, as much as the Achbarim as there are, they only affect two or three korim out of 10, right? So now the effect of the Achbarim is about two or three korim out of 10. It's not so significant. But on the other hand, it's compensated and balanced by the fact that the existing surviving wheat swelled a bit. So although both are small amounts, they even out each other. And therefore, says Rabbi Yudha, when we talk about big amounts, and the only second are achborim that are limited, they can't eat that much, plus the fact that on the other hand, it also swells in the winter, that balances out each other. The small amount percentage of achborim eating from a huge amount is balanced out for the good by the small amount of swelling of each wheat, and together we're good and we're even. And therefore, if that's the story, bringing in the summer and taking back in the winter, that case, if it's a huge amount like 10 korim, then you just, whatever you brought in, you take out. And the and the, and the Shomer is not allowed to keep anything for himself. And we are very, very, we are in Lenin, Stalin, North Korea now. And at 1025, you can ask me questions. Says the Gemara. Check the Gemara. Yeah, we are. Yeah, just a push-up chart. You also have the chart, by the way. Please do open your emails. There's a very nice chart, not exactly a chart, a list that it describes the entire Mishnah in, I think, a rather clear way. You saw it? Okay, you'll see it's at home. Oyrez, Frag the Gemara. Oyrez, you're telling me that let's assume Oyrez is rice. You're saying that rice belongs to the first group, which is what? Which is only 2.5% loss per year? That's so? Tuvachose, we know from experience that Moiroim seem to know, obviously, it, 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 it loses much more. Yeah, it decreases much more than just two and a half. We're talking here that the rice in the Mishnah that doesn't decrease much is the rice that is peeled. Peeled rice, the peeled rice is a, such a thing that because it's peeled, yeah, then it doesn't really lose much. Why? The, the rice with the peel, the Gemara will explain later, the peel itself falls off. The peel itself many times gone, is, gone, is gone with the wind, flies with the wind, or it falls apart. Yeah, like, like it's like a chaff of it. Yeah, mimela when you have we when you have rice with the peel, then yachasit relative to the rice with the peel, which I guess is heavy, then the decrease is much more. Really, we're going to see later it belongs to the second group of the five percent. Yeah, but when you talk about rice that's not peeled, I'm sorry, rice that is peeled, rice that is peeled is small to begin with and belongs to the first group. Of two and a half percent or four and a half tabin. Now the second group, Lakus middle zel pishton gimel saying the cool. How much is three same out of cool? Yeah, three same out of cool. That is a lot. That is ten percent, right? Esea is the thirty same in a cool. Third, three times ten is the thirty sea in a cool. Okay, so therefore ten percent is lost, and that's the lowest group, and that is by by kusmin, which is spelt and also flex. That group is really the group we talk about Pishtan with the give oil in with the with the stem. When the stem is still there, that's why the loss is 10%. Because besides the Akhbarim, the actual stem falls. You weighed it when you brought it to me with the stem. The stem tends to fall. So that's part of the reason why I'm not giving you back, says the Shomer to the guy. The entire thing, I'm not lying. Really, 10% is lost. Partially, partially the actual chef and the stem fell apart. That's why. 
Tana Namiyaki, a brisa to support it. The Kusmin of Lazel Pishtan Bagiv Oilin. Okay, as we said, Kusmin Lazel Pishtan Bagiv Oilin. That third group, when it was with the stems, and the stems fell. Oh, that's why 10%, which is crazy, yeah? Oh, oil is rice, which is not peeled, and the peel itself falls apart between the summer and winter during a few months. Because there are peels and the peel fell off, the chef, the peel, the stem, all the garbage, all the balagan, they fall apart, they fall to the side. That's why it's a loss of 10%. Okay. Says that explains the Mishnah. Tanakama says it is absolutely relative, and the relativity continues on a regular scale. Every core is the same percentage, two and a half or five or ten. If whether it's one core or two or ten or fifteen core, it's all the same. Tanakama does not believe, and soon we'll see why that the Achborim are different. Why? Because the Achborim call their friends. The more wheat you have, the more Achborim come to visit. Yeah, it's a bigger restaurant for the Achborim. And also, every year it doesn't change. Tavshin pay Aleph, Beis, Gimel, the Achborim still come. You know how many times this guy put the picture of the Kirstir Rebbe there? Many times he put the picture and he said all the Lachash. It didn't help. Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. It's time. Uh, okay, so we're holding Omer Bichan Benuri. The Seder, now it's time for questions. Comments and everything else. Thank you very much. Goodbye.